Global Eco Energy sell and install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial, and public sector customers. With access to a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, air source heat pumps, and eco garden makeovers, we offer a bespoke service tailored to your exact needs. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global eco.co.uk. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. For the best customer service, call 0800 233 Let's go! Rangers are dreaming of Champions League football again this year ahead of tonight's qualifier. First leg with the giants of PSV Eindhoven. Craig Moore, John Hartson are with us to discuss it and we'll bring you the team news as well. Remember, 8 o'clock kickoff tonight is beginning to build up and Celtic fans are trying to get over the nightmare of Kilmarnock at the weekend when the dreams of a treble are over. They crashed out of the Via Play Cup at the hands of Kilmarnock on Sunday. Celtic fans, what are you thinking? Big John is here. He knows about trebles. He knows about winning. And he wants to talk to you about this season. 08, 08, 17, 17, 700... Craig, tonight, how big is this game? How much are you looking forward to PSV in town? Yeah, and no, I look very much so. It's a it's a huge match for for Rangers. Uh, financially, we know uh, what it means to uh, to Scottish football and certainly to to Rangers. PSV, the team that they knocked out in the previous Champions League qualifier to get to the Champions League competition last season. Um, I think the home leg, you know, having that at Ibrox first is is an advantage. Uh, the, the the atmosphere will be electric, it really will. And Rangers, the players need to be able to tap into that that early atmosphere. And if they can get off to a good early start, they'll put themselves in a good position. PSV, good start to their domestic season as well, Paul. So I think it's going to be a tough ask, and it's definitely going to be a game that will um, go to the very very wire. It will go it will go to the away game in in Eindhoven to the very death. Are you ready to speak with some Rangers fans, Craig? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Lorraine's on the socials already and she says it's going to be 1-1 one, one, she reckons yeah. so I mean the away goal rule has changed so it's different so 1-1 one, one, would you buy that tonight would you I, I, we, I would take a result that yeah. gives gives Rangers an opportunity to go um, away John this is the conversation we said to Barry last night and Mark Guidi we didn't think we'd be having it but Celtic the dreams of a treble are over for this season so is it for time for the alarm Button to be pressed, or is it calmed down? You do lose football matches. Unfortunate for Celtic this early in the season. What's your take on Sunday at Kilmarnock? Well, I think the performance w- wasn't um, wasn't at the level required. I think too many players were were below par. I think you can carry two or three, but you know you, when you've got to carry five or six, um, one clear cut chance. For Celtic yeah. in 97 minutes. That's unbelievable, isn't it? Not enough. Not enough to win, to go and win a game of football. Um, need to do an awful lot better. I, I thought the delivery into the box wasn't great. I thought they got in behind once or twice, but a lack of creativity throughout the side. I thought the players were looking around at each other at times, thinking, well, who's going to actually produce a, a moment of magic? Almost waiting for it to happen, Paul, rather than going and making it happen. And some people will say, look, it's the start of the season, it'll take time to bed down. What would you say if you were the Celtic person in charge? Would you be buying, what, three really good players ready to play in the next 10 days? Yeah, well, Celtic need, they, they need that. They need some quality. They, they need, they can't be relying on Kyogo to produce miracles every week and to take his chances all the time. He's only human, although he's a fantastic player. So a centre forward is a must, in my opinion. Um, you know, a, a ball player in the middle of the park. Also, I think we ask an awful lot of Callum McGregor. He plays every minute of every game. He needs a little bit of help in the middle. And, and obviously now with a couple of injuries, Carter yeah. Vickers out, you know, Welsh with his hamstring, Navrovsky we're hearing. So it could be Lager, Bielka and Liam Scales that actually start the game at the weekend against St. Johnson. Celtic fans, where else do you get a chance to speak directly to John Hartson and you get a chance to have a go at Craig Moore and vice versa for the Rangers fans you can have a go with Big John and speak to Craig Moore I think we've got a Rangers fan on the line right away 0808 17 17 700 are you on the way to the match caller good evening Paul uh, evening Paul evening John hi uh, Paul Craig. Ah, yeah. I've had a good couple of chats with John very respectful okay. John, yeah. you know, indeed everything else like that, but yep. I am going to Going to the game tonight, looking forward to it. Um, as always, big, big, big game, obviously, 
completely fi- finance it. Uh, sure. But, but do you know what? Yeah. I, I phoned your show earlier a few yep. weeks ago and I said, uh, no, if Rangers played twiddly winks, I'd want to win, right? But huh? I, I wouldn't be disheartened as such because I think PSV are a, they're a better team than what they were last year. But do you know what? If we get to Europa League, I'll be happy with that. But obviously, we want to aim for the Champions League. But just to pick up on a couple of things, just, just when you mentioned about Celtic. Well, let me know. Let, hold, hold on, Rangers, just now, Paul. So, uh, are you saying, uh, Craig, is it a free hit almost tonight for, for Rangers, or is that taking pressure off Rangers? Come on, you did it last season. Why would you settle for Europa League? No, I, I look, every single player, every single staff member involved at the football club will be desperate for Champions League football. Um, that's a given. That's a given. And I, you know, we can speak on it on, on the experience of competing in that competition. As a player, you want to play at the highest possible level. That's the Champions League. Um, Rangers do come up against, I think, a, a, a very good side in, in PSV. Uh, Rangers haven't completely gelled uh, with the, the new signings that have come in, and Michael's obviously um, you know, changed his selection uh, so far in the games that we've, we've seen. Um, but I think the Rangers can, can get a result, and I'm saying a result, I think even a draw um, is a good result tonight to be able to, to, to take away... Uh, because PSV in the last Champions League qualifier were probably favourites as well, um, yep. but they were nervous and they struggled to handle that pressure, being at home, second leg, trying to get the job done. So the, the supporters will be huge, Paul. They'll be huge. I think Rangers have got a great opportunity, but they're up against a very good side. John? Well, I think Craig hits the nail on the head. I think tonight is um, is, is a huge match at Ibrox. We know the... The atmosphere that the Rangers fans create there um, beat everybody, beat everybody to the run in the in the Europa League final a couple of years ago. So why can't they take a positive result over to uh, over to um, PSV next week and look to hold on? You know, sometimes the Rangers did very well at holding on um, a few seasons ago when they were up against the odds once or twice, um, especially really difficult away matches. So. Some PSV are in good form. It's, it's not to yeah. say they'll continue that form. Um, you know, Rangers have players, I feel, to, to hurt PSV. You know, and um, as I said, I think they need they need a good performance tonight um, to go to, um, you know, the Netherlands next yeah. week and try, and try and get something. But tonight, it's all about tonight. You can't think thinking about next week. Just go and get a positive result. Score goals, which they're capable of, and give yourself... A chance in the game next week. And uh, uh, don't be thinking of there's a safety net for the Europa League. No. You've really got to go and attack these two games with everything you've got to try and play in the Champions League. Believe. That's the message tonight, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, Paul, very much so. Paul, are you feeling um, more confident when you hear John and Craig? I, although listen, we're blue teams away in the Europa League. You only have to look back at yep. RB Leipzig and Bruce Adog. These teams came up and Honestly, the decibels blew them off the pitch. We, we, we scored the early goals because yep. they couldn't keep up with us. So, yep. listen, we did that with a two and a half million pound budget. Two and a half, I'll repeat it again, two and a half million pound transfer budget got us to the Europa League final. That's... That's insane. So, yeah, we spent a lot more money, you know, this summer. Craig, what's your team for tonight? Can we hear... Let's get it from Craig. Who do you think Michael Beale will send out? I think the... The 11 that I'm going to go with, and I could be miles off it, but I'll have Butler in goals, uh, back four, Tavernier, um, Goldson, Suter, and uh, Barisic as a four. Midfield three uh, of uh, Sifuentes, Jack, and Raskin. Cantwell playing as a 10, uh, you know, because PSV got Joey Veerman and, and Sangari, two great holding midfielders. Uh, I think that that position is going to be key tonight. And Dessas and Danilo through the middle, so two up top. So that's a, the that's a team I'm going with. Could be completely wrong. It was a, virtu- it was a team that finished the second half with the yeah. tactical change yeah. against Savet. The double D up front then. Yes. Yeah. John, I don't think your team varies that much from Craig's. No, I've gone a back four with Balligan um, yeah. rather than Suter. Um, Balligan played on, at the weekend alongside Goldson. Um, Barisic at left back will come in. Um, I think Raskin, Lundstrom, 
and Cantwell. Oh, you got Lindstrom in there. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think the same three from the weekend. I think Matondo, Lamas, and Dessas. Right. I think Michael Beale said on a number of occasions he wants to keep it consistent. He wants to try and play the same team. Yes, he's got substitutes to come on. Um, that's okay. not not to say that that Jack may come on at some stage in the game. Um, so for me, I think it'll be four three three. Rangers will try and get on the front foot, get crosses in the box, and uh, and cause PSV a lot of problems, in particular early on in the game. If they can score early, as Paul has just um, alluded to there, the the caller. Um, score early and you can blow teams away at Ibrox. Here's what Michael Beale was saying about Champions League football. Well, it's hugely important to the players because I know it's their dream and their ambition. It would be important because it would be more finances than obviously going into the Europa League. We know we're guaranteed that, so these two games we can play with a clear mind and go right for them. We don't need to worry about whether we're in or out. I've sat beside Steven Gerrard in our time here where they were real do-or-die moments against Galatasaray, Legia Warsaw, Ufa, for example, to get into Europe or not be. So this one, we know we're in European football up to Christmas. It's what competition and in our way is an excellent team, but it's a fantastic opportunity for everybody. Paul, what are you thinking about a man who gave you some great moments last season? Give a few of them. Malik Tillman, is he going to be on tonight, do you think, for PSV? Um, I don't think he'll be. I don't. He might make a cameo or something like that. But um, I think yeah. he might be there for the return leg. My, my worry is mm-hmm. <laughs> football's got a funny thing in making making things happen. Do you know what I mean? And it would be ironic if he scores a goal. But hopefully we've got enough firepower up the top to to, to overcome that. And I, no, I wish I. John had mentioned there Matondo. I think he's been great the last mm-hmm. few games. His pace. He might play yeah. that kind of role that, that Kent did. That Kent did in Europe, the Europa League. You know, he, he pulled he pulled defenders into the box, and we got a couple of penalties. Or he swung the ball in, and James Tavier was there in the back of the net. And we've played a system that worked well in Europe, and I think I think that's a legacy of Gerard that, that's been there. And obviously Michael Beale knows that system because he was one of the the main the main architects sure. of that. If you want to say that, so I'm confident with it, but. It's just the law of averages I always worry about. I'm one of the kind of pessimistic people as well. But listen, I remember Craig. Craig would have played this game. Parma 2-0 against uh, Parma. One of the best games of my life. I remember it. Yeah, he's nodding. Um, yep. And they, they came there with Buffon. Okay. Big, big, massive internationalists. And we blew them away yeah. 2-0. And we went through. We got beat 1-0 over Parma. But we went into yep. the Champions League that year. So, no, hopefully okay. that happens again. I think the interesting thing is, Paul, I mean, Matondo... Although it wasn't hugely convincing in terms of scoreline against Morton, um, Matondo was decent in the match. You know, he, he, he was, you know, he was you know, the one that can afford to get, get isolated, and he is direct. You know, he'll get at the fullback, and he has good speed, so he has the ability to go by people. Um, there was another game earlier on already uh, this season where he come on and he, he made a real impact. So he could consider himself unlucky if he doesn't start tonight. But I think... That he's a he's a weapon that you can bring off uh, the bench, um, and, and and then that way you're still asking questions of, of PSV. But like I said, there's going to be moments tonight where uh, PS, PSV will dominate the ball, um, and they'll have a field position, and Rangers will need to um, to be nice and compact and organised. And Malik Tillman, as much as I loved him when he was at the club, if he gets the opportunity to come on, then. I hope some player gives him a nice, warm welcome, John. I hope, I hope John, someone, don't someone talk, lays the glove, get nice and close. Don't be talking like that. Uh, let him. No, nah, no. Nah, it, <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what football is all about, uh, yeah. and and that's what Rangers need to be. That mindset, that mentality tonight. You need to fight for everything to go and get the right result. Rangers need to be their best, of course, because they were hugely unconvincing. You just said they weren't hugely convincing. It's a great phrase, Craig. But they were really, really poor on Saturday. They went through in the cup, and that's what counts later yeah. on. But, I mean, Saturday afternoon, you were thinking, my goodness, Rangers fans were worried about the way the team have started. Yeah, but the one thing that, 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 the one thing that worries me is, is yeah. when you create or you have as many efforts and, and, and you're scoring two goals and one's for, from a penalty, and, and I do believe it was a penalty, whether it's a big pull or a small, it's a penalty. Um, so I, I think Rangers, they need to be creating and scoring more from those chances uh, because that, that blows teams away, Paul. That, that then all, all of a sudden makes it uh, an opportunity for players to really go on with the job and express themselves rather than these nervy kind of endings to matches. Paul, did you want to say something on Celtic briefly? 
Aye, thanks for letting me back in there, Paul. I, go. I just asked John, um, there's no tongue in cheek here, but I go back to what Brendan Rodgers said at the start uh, when he came back. And I said at the time as a Rangers fan, I'd have pinned up in the, the dressing room. Um, he said something along the lines of, for those that doubt me, I'll see you back here in May. Now, my assumption, well, my thinking behind that is, I'll see you back here with, with trophies. Now, he's already lost the League Cup now. Now, I think that's, believe it or not, one of the most important cups to win because particularly for, let's say, a new team coming together, it yeah, was Celtic. Sure. If Rangers win that, that gels the team together. And Matt Neal did it. You'll know, John. Matt Neal got his mm-hmm. first trophy League Cup and he went on to win. Yeah, so, sorry, I think we get that. Yeah, we, sure. we can do that. So you're saying, are you saying as a Rangers fan you don't think Celtic will win anything? Um, the pressure's on now. I mean, sure. they come up here with a reputation. They did win seven, no, uh, well, I, don't, I forget how many trophies they won. I don't want to remember that. I think, I, <laughs> I think, I think Celtic have won the League yeah. Cup five years out of the last seven. So it's, it's not bad form. Uh, yeah. Yes, we've lost the Cup game without the, the Cup. Comment, the, the, treble, yeah. the, the treble's yeah. gone. Yeah. But... Um, you know, there's still three competitions to, to, to fight for. Uh, I think uh, the, the Champions League is big for Celtic um, in terms of Brendan trying to take the team into the knockout stages, which will be difficult because it's, you know, it, it, it is you are up against the very, very best. But, um, you know, as I said, for me, you know, it, it's a blow. Don't get me wrong. It's a blow to lose, yeah. in particular the way that we did lose. But also you have to give Kilmarnock um, of course. a lot of yeah. credit because once they went 1-0 up, you know, they defended very strongly. They looked very well organised. Vassell came on and they still had a threat going forward. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a disappointing, you know, to go out. But it's happened, and uh, they've got to get back on the bus and go again. Craig, you don't have any issue with Martin, um, sorry, Brendan Rogers saying, uh, "See you next May." That was mainly to the Celtic fans, surely, who might have been doubting the fact that he came back after leaving four years before. Mm-hmm. Have you got an issue with him saying that? Is it, is it one for up in the, nah, on the board? Look, uh, yeah. Managers, unfortunately, every single thing that you say, uh, you know, people can go back on it and say, yeah. well, "By the way, you know, what about the crystal ball he had there?" Yeah. or um, well, maybe he shouldn't have said that. At the end of the day, he, he's trying to convince Celtic supporters that he's the man for the job. Um, he has huge experience. There, there will be bitter disappointment in terms of going out mm, yeah. um, and, and, and missing the opportunity to progress in the, in the, the League Cup. Um, but you dust yourself down and, and, and you go again. That's the only way you can um, afford to work here in Glasgow. Bob, well, thanks for your call. 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. For the best customer service, call 0800 233 5788. Let's go. It's Paul Cooney, John Hartson, Craig Moore, and in a second or two, we're going to Canvas Lang. Ross is on the line. This was the manager, Brendan Rogers, after Celtic going out of the Cup on Sunday. I always think if you lose any game, you've got to give it 24 hours to grieve you. We'll go away, we'll assess it. and. The key thing is it's about learning. This is, a, this is a team that's got a lot of new players in. You know, people will maybe look at it saying this is the same squad. It's not the same squad. You know, it's a different squad of players. But still, we should have more, we should have more quality than what we showed today. So we need to go away, review it, analyse it, and then uh, look to our next game. Ross and Camus Lang. Good evening, Ross. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? OK? Yeah, good. Thank you. How are you after 24, 36 hours? You've had that time to assess it. Can you believe the result on Sunday? To be honest, Paul, um, I, I generally am not, I'm not, I'm not even surprised that Sunday's result happened. I think Celtic have weakened. I don't think we've strengthened in this transfer window. And I think the squad is definitely going backwards. Um, the fact that we've let Moy leave... Uh, Starfield leave, Jota leave, and we've brought in players that are not equipped to go out right into that squad. We've brought in projects, and this transfer window has been nothing but abysmal. Well, okay. I, I disagree, Paul. I, I, I sorry, Ross. Um, yeah. Ross. Uh, I disagree because it's it's, it's too early. Um, you had to sell Jota, right? Um, the Starfield one. I don't know if he wanted to leave. I don't know. We paid 5.5 million for him two years ago. Uh, he's had a great partnership with um, with Starfelt. Sorry, with um, Carter, yeah, Carter Vickers. Vickers. And of course, his girlfriend's gone to the Iberian Peninsula. Australia. He yeah. wanted to be there. But so I, I also think yeah. I also think Alistair Johnson's been a big miss. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I also think Carter Vickers was a big miss at the weekend. Okay. It's too early to say about Yang. Um, can he cut the mustard? Mm-hmm. Home got an opportunity on Saturday. Looked okay in previous games. Came off at the weekend for Turnbull after after 60 minutes or something like that. So I don't think we should be pressing the panic button. Yes, I do agree with we need more quality. Um, but it it costs more money and it's it's finding them. I, I'm I'm wanting to Ross bring in a centre forward. Um but centre forwards are the hardest positions to find goals. And um and, and you look at Lager Bielka, too early, was in the yeah. door, Ross, three days, and he's asked to play away on that mm. on that difficult surface at Kilmarnock in 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 a cup tie. Um and then you look at the other one. Um, Aaron Moy, there was no option because you know, he was retired. So, with Aaron Moy retired. So yeah, indeed. I'd like to There's see. An injury. He, I'd like yeah. to see Hetati yeah. back in there, Johnson, and then we're, we're actually not too far away when you get Carter Vickers back, either with Lager Bielka or Nabrowski. I actually don't think, but I, I I do think that we need another two or three additions in them particular positions I spoke about with real quality. It's just where where do you go and get them? Ross, come back in, because John is a Celtic legend, and you're a Celtic fan, John, as well, but you're also disappointed. The fans aren't happy. Mm. Ross? Yeah, no, this, I, I, John, I agree with you in the mm. sense of um, going and get a top quality striker, that costs money, I, I agree with you there. Yeah. I think right now, apart from Kyogo, even even when you look at that game on Sunday, we had nobody to bring on the bench for, for, for the bench on to change that game. That's a game that would have suited a Jack and Marcus to come on and get his yeah, a goal. Absolutely. And and I think right now, I mean you look at Jota leaving and the 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 number of players we've got in the attacking options, I'm a wee bit concerned coming into this Champions League campaign that yeah. we're gonna leave ourselves short and we're gonna and we and we're gonna pay the price for that. I, I'm absolutely with you, Ross. I, I I'm I'm with you, um but I do feel as if there's some uh, there's plenty of players that have come in. There's two there, home and Yang and O oh, from last season. Um, but John, are they going to be ready for Champions League? Are they good enough? You think they are? That's the question for me. Are, yeah. are they good enough sure. to play in a in a team that that needs to win every week yeah. and needs to compete for pri- uh, for competitions mm-hmm. and medals? You know, we've only seen little fits and starts from them, really. You know, we, we Turnbull came in for the first game of the season, but. You know, he did he did very well. He's had a good pre season. We left our best player out, it's Hattie. Um he can't be happy. He's now injured, you know? doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. So I think that's he, the he's biggest picked concern. Up a little injury, yeah. But he, he, we gotta get him back in the team. Yeah. Alistair right. Johnson back in the team. And he'll be back, yeah. Carter Vickers and then and then get the players about his numbers were, were terrific last season. You know, and uh, and Maeda as well. Well what what's happened to these players? Why why can't they dig in and put the performance in and 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 go and play mm-hmm. to the system that Brendan wants, whether or not four three three. People have been speaking about Brendan has to play the same way as what Ange played. Brendan Rodgers w- will will play the system that he feels can win games for Celtic while he's manager. If everybody could play that four three three that Ange played, you know, if it was that simple, then everybody would be playing that system, wouldn't mm-hmm. they? You know, it's about bringing the right players in. It's about coaching them yep. to play in that philosophy. Not as easy just just to just to put it together like you know sure. like, like like you know. Just I think like the injuries. I think the injuries um, are the are the biggest concern, and that's that's really hindered in terms of uh, I think Celtic at this moment uh, in time. And sometimes sometimes you can just be unlucky in terms of the injuries and the timing and what you're picking up. Um, but they've certainly had a lot of a lot of injuries, and and the boy Johnston I I think is has been a key miss, a big miss because. He's he's a proper defender. He is a proper defender, um, and and for me, he sets a, a good example. Obviously, uh, Carter Vickers uh, as well. But I think sometimes you can get a little bit carried away. Uh, and Brendan Rodgers says that you know he never assesses a game until after twenty four hours and lets the emotion and all that go out. Let, let's remember the start of the game uh, against Kilmarnock. Celtic were by far the better side. Yeah. They had a couple of really good opportunities. I think there's one where Kyogo has dropped deep. He's played the ball around the corner. O'Reilly's in on goal. They started the game well enough and had good opportunities in the match. Right? Now, they score those goals. They go and win the game comfortably. 
I, I, I just think that, again, there's probably a level of excitement um, in, in, in not the nice way for a Celtic supporter. It may be a little bit nervous. Uh, but oh, I the think Rangers fans, they loved it the weekend. The Celtic fans are flat as pancakes. Yeah, but, but also... They can't believe it. They, they, you speak to a lot of Rangers supporters as well, and they're, they're not hugely convinced about, about what they're seeing either. No, but it's given the Rangers fans a bounce because they were poor against Morton, but they're through in the yeah. cup, and they were poor. We, we know it. And then Celtic are out of the league, and I know it can happen. You're not yeah. going to win every single game. Ross, what would you say to the board? Because Brendan Rodgers was talking on Friday. You would hear it about, you know, I get the players and then I coach them and train them. Um, what, what's the message? What would you be saying? Right now, if you're asking me uh, as a Celtic fan, I'm, I'm concerned that Rodgers has made a statement on Friday that the board are not prepared to spend the money that he was expecting to be spent. And that's my concern, that we're going to basically bring in players like Yang. Again, John, I agree with you. It's too early to make a judgment call on guys like that because yeah. they're just in the door. But I think that for right now, if you look at the signings that we've brought in, not one of the players has made us any better. They're, they're basically projects. We've not spent any money on players that are going to come in and make us a better team than we were last year. And where where is Marco player. Tilio? Injured. Yep. Also. Yeah, well, what was he? Two million Australian centre forward. Yep. So that's Come a that little way. bit like Ross. You, mm-hmm. you, I I think, uh, and I know the the player uh, quite well. You're right. I, I think he's a project signing because uh, Maeda's obviously a, um, an experienced player. Is better. Uh, Abara is is a better player. Haksabanovic at the moment more advanced, obviously than than um, Tilio. So that that was a project signing, which is kind of what you're saying. That's that's frustrating because. The difference and what was required, in my opinion, from Celtic um, achieving more in Europe, which is obviously what you know, a lot of the supporters, a lot of people are talking about, how can Celtic improve and be better in Europe? It was always, always, always going to be another top-notch striker. But it hasn't happened. Yeah, yep. sorry, Ross, on you go, Ross. Yeah. yeah, no, I was saying, I agree with you, Craig. I think that when you look at that squad, We've not improved that squad. We have basically brought players in that are that are going to be ready in a, a year, eighteen months time. We need players in that squad. But when that Champions League comes around, that we are ready to go. And right now, we have not got the squad to to compete at that level. So any Celtic fan that thinks that we're going to compete in Europe this year, I've kept myself on because that's not going to happen. I think that the the biggest concern was at at the weekend was when we had to. When we had to try and get into the game uh, against uh, against Kilmarnock, we we did get a couple of overlaps, Ralston on on one side and, and Yang and Taylor on the other side late in the game. The quality into the box wasn't wasn't good enough. Um, it was just a little yeah. bit of a hit and hope. Um, and it, as I said earlier on in the show, Ross, it was more like. Celtic were, were almost waiting for McGregor to rattle one in from 20 yards. It was like yep. the, oh, we, we were waiting for Mayeda to make one of those lung-busting runs into the box and it produce a finish, or, 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 or Kyogo just producing another miracle. It was almost like we, we were just you know, waiting rather than going and making it happen. It, there was... There was, there was a few signs of, of, of nervousness and I know the pitch was difficult but don't really want to make excuses. No. And also, when, when, when we're up against physicality mm-hmm. like, like Kilmarnock, oh, we, we, we tend to struggle. Who's the new Jota, Ross? Do you think he's on the books and he's yet to emerge? I don't know. If you're asking me, out of the new guys, who I think has got the most promise, I think Yang. Yang looks like he could be a right good player. Yeah. And I think for the games that I've seen him, he does look as if he's got that flair about him. Again, it might just take him a bit of time to come in and make his and make his that and that be a bit better. But again, I'm, I'm no I'm not going to write guys off because oh, they've come yeah. because they're just in the door. These guys need time, but I think it's a bit unfair, as you say, to throw the new boy. He's only came in what three days ago, and he's been thrown into a game against Kilmarnock. I yeah. think that's a wee bit unfair that, sure. he's been, that he's been thrown in at the deep end, and that's where I think that. Brendan Rodgers and the board need to sit down and work out where we're going to get this quality from because the Celtic fans won't won't sit back and and let us go into Europe and you beat every game. Now I get the financial aspect against teams that you're playing, but end of the day, Celtic fans are expecting us to do something in Europe this year. And with that squad, I just don't know if I've got the depth to do it. It's almost like Brendan's um, 
give them an opportunity. Home started the game ahead of uh, Turnbull. Yang came on for half an hour for a barder. And it's like you, you, you give them an opportunity, but then it's just too early. So when when does Brendan get the opportunity to actually see these players? Kilmarnock away, generally our record against Kilmarnock is is, is fantastic. We beat them 5-0 there a couple of seasons ago. Last season. Take, take, yeah. take nothing away from their performance in beating Celtic. They've beaten Rangers there earlier on in the league. They went away and, and drew against Hearts. Maybe there was just, we underestimated Kilmarnock and their challenge. You know, we can't just turn up and win a game of football. You've but they got, saw what they did against Rangers just you, you uh, got, you've got to make 10 it days happen. before. You, you've, got to yeah. go, you've got to go and be ready and play to a style and go and make it happen every time you take but, the pitch. But there wasn't a surprise in the way Kilmarnock played. That's no. the way they played against Rangers. Yeah, and, 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 and they were, they, they've showed now in both matches against uh, Rangers and Celtic that yeah. once they've once they've got that goal, I tell you what, boy, mm. did they know how to defend it. Yeah, because they, they, they get bodies on the line, they defend ever so well. They know that there was waves of attack, but uh, to a man, they, were, they, they all stood up and they, they done their job. So you've also, as John touched on, you have to praise Kilmarnock in terms of the way that they've gone about their early start to the season. Brendan yeah. Rogers spoke about transfers. He was asked. I've said that before, that you know, the, team, the team needs match winners, it needs quality. Um, so, um, so, yeah, that's something that hopefully we can do in the next... 10, 11 days. Uh, the 10 or 11 days is going to be huge. Ross, do you feel there's going to be, I know people talked about marquee signings, whatever that means, and we know that compared to England, we're on another planet. We know that. But you were saying earlier with John about, you know, money. There is money in the bank and the Celtic fans will expect it to be spent wisely. 25 million came in for a player who, of course, is going out on loan, isn't he, from in the Middle East? He's not got a place, Jota. But Ross, do you think, what would you say? You're going to sign a couple of top players in the next 10 days, 9 days? I think I, I think there needs to be some some level uh, quality bring in. Now, I'm not saying go out and spend 10, 15 sure. million. I, I think we need to be realistic and I think if we get, can get somebody that, that can give us a wee bit more experience and depth of what we've got, I would be more than happy with that. But with the news today that I'm hearing about Jota turning out and loan, yeah. if, I'm, if, I, if, if I'm Celtic, I would be chatting the door saying, listen, come back, on you come. I would take him in a heartbeat. And I don't know if that would be an option to bring Jota back. The trouble is he's on 200 grand a week, isn't he? Over is, there. Is that all? To the 180 that all? grand a week. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I know, you're right. It needs to be something special, or the Kieran Tierney or whatever. Or John, is that almost, is that too much the panic button? But the fans yeah, are... So they're not in the market to no, pay players sure. off the wages or if they, if they can get Jota for a, a limited, you know, um, wage right. structure. The and Saudis might do a deal, sorry, because they've got so much money. Maybe they would. Jota back... You're not sure? Well, I'm not sure, no. to be honest. Listen, it, it would be a great move for the Celtic fans. They'd be delighted, but... Would I think, they? I think, I think, would they? I think... Oh, it's yeah. bring Jota back. They love yeah. Jota. Oh, yeah. so, but, but leaving and, and in such a short period of time coming back. Well, yeah, but he had to leave. Look, look at the money. Look at the money Celtic had for him on the back of a couple of Actually, seasons. Actually, you know and, what it is? Uh, it, 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 it's, um, it's a big sign as to... We know that there's a new market in play in Saudi Arabia... Tread very, very carefully. Uh, and the, the, the reason why, by all accounts, that Jota uh, may be looking to be moved out on loan is for another marquee position. So, um, you know, things can change very, very quickly there. I can't see how um, a deal for Jota to, uh, to come back to Celtic could happen unless, like, like you said, Paul, the Saudis just yeah. say, you know what, I'm, I'm, we're going to cover all of that. Uh, Ross, being positive, right, we go and win on Saturday. We win well against St. Johnson. Then we go when Ibrox on the third with six points ahead of Rangers. That everything changes, the whole mood in the camp, everything changes. But I do get the performance at the weekend was alarming in terms of, uh, you know, Celtic n not being at their best, if you like, and being quite poor. Yeah, no, I agree, John. I think I think I, I'm not hitting the panic button in, in the league. I think we we'll win. I think we we'll win on Saturday. I don't have any issues. Ibrox, you know, you know, you know yourself, John. Yeah. You can't you, you can't make up these games. These games take care of themselves. So well, we got again, to go. We got to go and step up. We got to go and play like we played last year. You know, your big players, your O'Reillys, your Abadas, they They've got to find that form again. And it's yeah, one okay. game. Yep. It's one game, Ross. We've lost one game. Okay, I think the expectations have, have also risen as well on the back of. You know, Ange being there, five trophies. Brendan has won before. He knows the blueprint. He knows the expectations. And now he's looking for some quality to add to the group he's got. Final point. Was that a pe Should that have been a penalty at the end, Craig? 
Oh, and that was a penalty. It should have been, yeah, wasn't it? Barry it was agreed. I couldn't, yeah. I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, I was... Thanks uh, 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 But I was like, uh, it was a definite penalty. Yeah. I know, but you don't expect them, do you? You can't show because you don't expect them. Sure. Can I add one quick point, guys? Sure. And I will be quick. I think, John, just in a, in a hole, I don't mind Celtic losing a game. That doesn't bother me. I think it's just the way we lost on Sunday. Yeah, I agree. That we, never, we, we never really created much. And again, we're looking for a penalty to get as a draw at Kilmarnock. Yes. Yeah, Yang, that, Yang yes. had a big chance, doesn't he? Yang's got a score. Yeah. Yeah, we. I think, I, I think we created one one clear cut chance in ninety seven minutes, and that's that's not enough to win any game of football. And is that the Yang opportunity you're talking about? Yeah. And that was off target. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Off target. That was six yards out. Yeah. 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 There's one in target. I think, was, right. I think. I think someone got a block on that. Craig, you went okay. off for the corner. Ross, you've got everybody talking. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks, Ross. Cheers, Ross. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye. Cheers. Oh eight, oh eight, seventeen, seventeen, seven hundred. It's Craig Moore, John Hartson. And give us a call if you're on your way to Ibrox. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. They pride themselves on honesty, integrity, quality and workmanship. Let's go! Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Thanks for making the switch. We're on every night from five o'clock. Craig Moore, Paul Cooney and John Hartson. Big weekend for you, John, as well. We'll talk about that before seven tonight. You've got a big charity night in Glasgow, spoke to Jim White last night. He's looking forward to it very much, and many others. Talk to you later, because at the moment, Craig, let's hear from Michael Beale ahead of this game tonight. It's huge, isn't it? And I remember this time last year as well, Rangers probably were underdogs going into it. Would that be yeah. fair? Or was there maybe a bit more confidence because they just got to a Europa League final three months before? No I, st- no, I still I still think leading into PS- PSV this stage last season that PSV were favourites. Mm-hmm. But Rangers did it, despite the fact that uh, we thought you know, in the away leg, they might not do it, but they did. And Michael Beale, in no doubt, though, this is a tough, tough test. The sternest test, I think, that we'll probably face across the season. I think they're a very, very good team. They've invested in the squad heavily, really good players. There's no doubt about that. I'm not so sure about the, the things around revenge. It's, it's two different coaches. I think me and uh, Peter have got a lot to live up to in terms of Rude and Gio. They both did excellent jobs in their times at the club, and it's a lot of changes in personnel in both teams. Quite a few names in there. All of the managers, too, have gone to Aaron. It's a massive test for both of them. Uh, the team news, we don't have team news yet. We will before the end of the programme, but this was him speaking last night about the squad. Yeah, uh, obviously Ben comes back in because Ridvan's not fit, and I feel that Rabi has, uh, in the last couple of weeks, shown a good face in terms of his speed and his directness, and we may need it over the two legs. No issue uh, with Yanis. I think Yanis, as he, as he put in his own words, is very happy when he's playing football and he's, he's missed football for a year. He wants to play as a starter week in, week out, so it may be that between now and the end of the window we look at that. Uh, I thought he did well when he came into the game at the weekend. Was that Yanis Hadji's phone Hadji. going there? Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, do you want to talk about that? Does it matter now about Hadji, given that you're racing towards the game? He's... Ah, I, again, Hadji, you know, it's clear he wants to play first-team football. Yeah. Uh, it's not. It doesn't look likely, Paul, that he's going to get that on a week-to-week basis at Rangers. So he'll, he'll be moving on. He's off ski. Glenn Kamara getting closer to a Leeds to deal, Leeds. and that's good for both of them. Surely, you know, for Glenn Kamara and for the club to get some money. Yeah, yeah. Again, uh, an opportunity. Glenn's been a, a wonderful player at Rangers. Um, you know, he's come in from from Dundee and really established himself now for Rangers to to be able to cash in and the player to to really go and kick on and enjoy his football again. I think is is a good fit for for both parties and hopefully that can happen for the player. What you're thinking? He spoke also about Jack Butland, who's made a good start to his career. Uh, listen, we brought him in because he's a top quality goalkeeper. We get him at a fantastic age as well. You know, just turned thirty with a lot of motivation and. He had to do a couple of bits today. I didn't think he was overly worked, if I'm honest. I thought, obviously, in midweek he showed that, you know, a Rangers goalie has to be able to, you know, in the big moment, in the big game, has to be able to make a save. Alan McGregor made a career on it, and and Jack, in midweek, did very well in one or two moments, I thought. John, it's quite a gear change, isn't it? They're going from Morton, no disrespect to the ton, yeah. but going from Morton to PSV. Yeah, but sometimes, uh, Paul, it, it's a mindset as well. You know, you, they'd have turned up against against Morton Rangers at home, thinking this will be a stroll in the park. No disrespect to Morton, didn't quite happen like that. You know, mentally, when you go into a game similar to what Saturday did at um, at Kilmarnock, this this will we'll we'll roll over Kilmarnock today. We'll stroll to a win. 
doesn't happen. You have to be at it. And, and Morton made a really good fish to the game. Rangers went through uh, eventually, which was the most important thing, just to get the just to get the win in the bag. Make sure you're in the hat for the next round of the cup. Um, but going back to Butland as well, it might not be spot on in terms of um, the concentration you have to show because Celtic and Rangers goalkeepers don't have an awful lot to do. Um, they're not they're not peppered every week. Some teams offer offer a little bit more than others with the better strikers when they come to Celtic Park and Ibrox. But you've always you've always got to be concentrated fully. So when you are called upon, you, you're you're ready and and able to make good saves at crucial times. Pepper, that's a great word, isn't it, Craig? Yeah. Did you ever pepper a oh, goalkeeper? I've certainly, great... I, I didn't, but yeah. I've, I've, I've been on the back of uh, yeah. performances where you've had to hang in there, mm. and your goal, your goal's been been peppered. But now Butlin, uh, he's shown that he, he's able to make big saves uh, to keep uh, the team in the in the match, which uh, is is hugely important um, and, and he, he makes good decisions you know we haven't really seen anything in terms of you know short passes and, and, and therefore pressure un, un, you know pressure that you don't really need if he, if he has to go long he goes long if he's had to make saves he's made saves great age as Michael touches on and um, he certainly looks very very assured Barry was saying last night Every single player needs to be on it tonight for Rangers. Yeah. Some of the newer ones that I think have impressed everyone, Jose Sifuentes, for example. What are you looking for from him tonight? Um, energy. Uh, mm. For me, he's, he's one that, that will see a lot of the ball. He'll have a lot of contacts. He'll have a lot of contests. Um, and he, he seems to really um, thrive uh, with that type of game. Um, I really like Cif- uh, Sifuentes. Shows that he can get through a huge workload. Um and it's quite composed. He doesn't really panic on the ball and he just keeps things moving. Uh, I think he's a great addition in the middle of the park because, like I said, he has legs and he has energy. And, and that engine room, today's day in football, is an absolute must that you've got legs in there. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think someone like Sif Wentz bringing in that little bit of quality. They're, they're, those players tend to make the right decisions. They make the right calls when they want to go forward when when they recognise um, easy passes, make the game look very easy. Um, and they can almost run the game from midfield. They can almost judge the pace of the game. And they make the right decisions. And that's, that's what you get when you have quality. The manager picked out somebody at the other end of the pitch, um, Dezers. has been mm-hmm. speaking about him, who's now on the score sheet. Yeah, I don't think anyone in Scotland's really seen that yet. I think Cyril's come in, he's been very well behaved, and uh, he likes to put himself about and bump into people. I think we started seeing that a bit more from the weekend, and he has a good history against PSV. I think he scored twice in the last time he played against them. He's a player that people at Rangers have followed for a long time. We tried to sign him even before his time with Feyenoord, so... When the opportunity come for him to to come into Rangers, I was delighted we could do it. He obviously come off of probably two or three months of inactivity. And with every game at the moment, he's looking stronger and more like the player that, that I think he can be. Craig, his Dutch experience could be important. Yeah, no, he, he'll definitely know what he's, he's up against. And I, I think he definitely will start tonight. Uh, I, I, like I said, I think that's yeah. crucial in terms of knowing your opponent. Um, and he's, he's scored against them also. Um, so, like, like, he gets his goal. Um, I think he also maybe had assists at the weekend there. So, mm-hmm. look, it, it, it's important for strikers, yeah, to, to get off to a good start. Uh, really, really important. So, he, he'll only gain confidence from that. Wouldn't mind seeing him, uh, as Michael say, he wants to see him, uh, or he's only seen him behave. Wouldn't mind seeing him th- <laughs> throw a few central defenders about, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> He's on one today. Yeah, isn't he? He's, yeah, why not? You're checking everybody about today. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That's because I had to walk, by the way. <laughs> exactly. That's what right. it was. Oh, yeah. The traffic outside has been yeah. terrible, some road work's going on. <laughs> Craig's agent has been on already. <laughs> Looking for more petrol money. Uh, no, it's an electric car you've got. So, the big game, 8 o'clock kickoff tonight, PSV in town up against Rangers. Michael Beale was asked, uh, what's the latest, any transfer business news? Well, it's likely to be more outs than in just because of the size of the squad, I think. I think the, the board have in, invested well from January down, what is it, 13, 14 million from January down on 11 players. So when you say 11 players, it don't sound like a lot, but when you've obviously put the price of three or four, but I think in the transfer market so far, we've done extremely well. If you think of Raskin, Sifuentes and, and Campwell costing combined two million. 
there's good business been done by this club. Butland on a free transfer, Dow, Sterling. So the money's been spent in the front areas. We did lose five or six players in that area. So maybe one or two out. If we can get one in that I think is going to make the starting team stronger, then that will be great. And I don't think that's going to depend too much on what happens in these two games. Greg? Yeah, well, I mean, look, he's still going to lose players. There's no doubt about that. Kamara's going to go. Haji more than likely Sounds goes. Sounds like it, doesn't it? Um, what what player? I mean, I know that they're set up in terms of losing players and they have targets to, to, to come in. They have been quite smart in the market. They're very top-heavy. Um, so it'd be interesting to know what, what, what kind of player they would look to, to bring in. Here's what he said about the Haji situation. No, I mean, no, I mean, Yanis spoke after three or four days of, of pre-season about, you know, he missed a year. You know, I brought Yanis back into the team against Partick Thistle last year, very early into his rehab, and it was clear at that moment he wasn't ready. Uh, over the summer, he's worked really hard to be fit. I wouldn't say he's at optimal fitness right now, and I think uh, the conversation with us has always been very honest. He's a player that I have a strong relationship with on a personal level, and his desire is he wants to be a main starter and play every single game, and, and no one's got that guarantee here at Rangers. He's competing with... Todd Campwell for that role and, and maybe Sam Lammers and one or two others. Tom Lawrence is now returning. So it's more what does Yanis need to get back after being out for a year with an ACL. And those conversations and options Yanis and his agent have been looking at for the last week or so. So in the background, there's been a lot going on. And this is what he had to say about PSV, you're in town tonight. It's about setting the second leg up. We know we need to go across to Eindhoven and put in a fantastic performance regardless of what happens tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is the first look of two very good teams coming up against each other. I think we're up against a formidable opponent. It's When I look at the draw of the other legs, then I think we're saying we're playing against probably the strongest side we could play right now. It's a real big opportunity for the club for the players and the fans and everybody. And so I'm looking for us to show a real strong foot in the first leg and set up the second leg in Eindhoven. John, what do you reckon is going to happen tonight? Well, I think I think Rangers have to, um, obviously they have to have some sort of balance to the game. They just can't go gung-ho from the first minute because uh, PSV will will look to, um, to play on the counter-attack at times as well. But PSV have some really good players, you know, I think De Jong, Dest, uh, you know, former Barcelona, I think he's on yeah. loan from Barcelona. So they can't be underestimated, but Rangers are better when, when they're at home in Europe. They've proved that. Yes, they've got some good results on the road as well, uh, credit to them. But they have to they have to make Ibrox a, a four, and they need one of those historic nights again tonight. And as Michael Beals, he's absolutely right. They need to set the game up for next week. They don't want to be too far behind. Ideally, you know, they, they, they'd want a good lead um, against a really good team. But they don't want to be out of it either. You want to go over to um, Eindhoven next week with, with you know, a positive, positive frame of mind. We, we caused them a lot of problems at Ibrox. Um, we can score against them. We know we can. Um, we can match them, you know, physically, and Rangers will need to do all them things tonight to set the game up, as Michael Beale said next week, you know, in, in Eindhoven. I think yeah. I think it's very important that Rangers defensively can try and keep PSV and especially captain uh, De Jong out the box uh, because he's big. He's a big, big player. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a huge cap. presence. So if they can keep if they can keep out of their own box and in terms of higher up the park, he's not going to run away for you. Pace wise, and certainly in terms of delivery into the box, they hit him as well. They hit him they from do. full back areas, and then they get the second balls, and he, he gets them up the pitch if you like the young. Well, you two know about big European nights. We'll continue to build up to it. We're going to hear more from Brendan Rogers. I see your old teammate Chris Sutton has been saying today in a podcast that he, he thinks there's been some arrogance on the Celtic board sitting on their hands, not spending. Or also saying, why was Starfelt allowed to go early? Jota has gone, so I know the different positions. So we're going to discuss that and much more in the next hour. That's coming up after the news. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. They pride themselves on honesty, integrity, quality and workmanship. Let's go! Global Eco Energy sell and install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial and public sector customers. 
with access to a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, air source heat pumps, and eco-garden makeovers. We offer a bespoke service tailored to your exact needs. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global-eco.co.uk. Loads of your calls coming in to Paul Cooney here with Craig Moore and John Hartson. Right across the city and the area, some of the Rangers fans looking forward to the game tonight and asking for Craig's prediction. So we'll do, get that in a second or two. And from John, what about Celtic? It's not the panic button, but what is going to happen over the coming days till the end of the transfer window? And when will the team start to gel? They have been racked by loads of injury problems. In fact, Jimmy's been on and he said it reminds some of how Rangers were affected last year in the number of injuries. What do you think? 0808 17 17 700. This is what Brendan Rodgers said after the defeat down at Rugby Park. There's no doubt, but I don't think we did enough to, to win the game. Um, we, we upped the level, obviously, when we went behind, but we didn't show enough quality when, when we had the ball. And... Uh, and the goal, we, um, we switch off from a throw-in and we don't win our duels and then they get through and score. So, um, so yeah, it was a, a disappointing uh, result for us. But give credit to, uh, to Kilmarnock. They worked very hard, got the blocks in, got the tackles in and, uh, and like I say, the, uh, they win the game. Laurie's on the line. Good evening. Hey, the panel. Good evening. How are you guys? Hi, Laurie. Good, Laurie. Good. What's yeah. in your mind tonight? Uh, well, I uh, start off on a late hearted note, Paul. I, I couldn't help but chuckle at the, the caller earlier, Paul, the Rangers fan, yeah. uh, who understandably is grateful to Kilmarnock, who he sees as a surrogate, but able to deliver something that his own impotent Ranger side was incapable of doing for that themselves. Uh, so, yeah. you know, that, that's, that's understandable. I suppose if, yeah. the, if the roles were reversed, it'd be the same, you know. I think what but, we say uh, is he, he, an too subtle dig he, about he, Brendan uh, yeah. and you know Paul I'll tell you what yeah. Brendan will be back in May with a vengeance just watch your space Paul you know anyway my main point <laughs> uh, Paul yeah. is uh, regarding the defeat of the weekend yeah. a bad result a bad day at the office I think some of the reaction in all honesty is bordering and near hysteria we've lost one game we won our first two league games mm -hmm. Uh, we don't have our problems to seek injuries wise, he can't legislate for injuries and the guy Jimmy whom you referenced there, that's yeah. a very valid point I made. I was thinking that myself last season, unless I'm mistaken, Rangers lost three or four uh, first team centre backs and they had to go on with it, you know, so uh, nobody, uh, no, no team yeah. is immune uh, for injuries, uh, the other thing I will say is that to compensate or to cope in the absence of uh, stalwarts, such as the guys that we've lost, you do need you know, good depth yeah. uh, in the rest of your, your squad. I don't think that's been addressed thus far, Paul. I think Brendan has got 10 days, uh, or more accurately, the board has got 10 days to do something about it. And I'm quietly confident uh, there will be another two or three signings uh, coming in to bolster the ranks at Celtic Park. So, no, I'm not really on too much I don't know. I was disappointed by Lewis, but it's a one off situation. Before that, Brendan Rodgers had contested 24 League Cup ties. Yep. Won them all in his previous uh, tenure. He lost there on the Sunday. But you know what? If you've got a success ratio or a win ratio of 96%, that's bad, no bad by anybody's definition, no. surely. You, you, you put yourself up there to be shot at, Laurie, and uh, Brendan's certainly done that with the success that he's had. But you know what? My view as well this season is over the last 11, 12 years, Celtic have had it very easy. They've had it very easy. The last couple of years, they've had to work a bit harder. Obviously, they lost They lost a big one the, 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 when we were going for 10 in a row. History, unprecedented. Um, and we got beat for that title. Rangers did very well that season. Um, great defence. Currently deserved to win the league. Uh, absolutely. But for me, we might have to scrap a little bit this season might not come so easy to us. We might have to just look to dig in. You know, Navrovsky, Lager, Bielka, mm -hmm. uh, Alistair Johnson coming back, Hitati back in the side, Kyogo needs to hit the ground running again. You know, Abada, um, Maeda might have to find their feet again, might have looking to go again, go to the well again and produce these performances. 
and it might not come as glorious and as easy as I say. I won't say easy. Easy is probably the, the wrong word. I don't want to sound disrespectful, but we've had it all our own way for a long time, and it just could be a little bit of a um, not not a slap on the wrist, but just a bit of a wake up call to think we can't underestimate teams. We went to Aberdeen and won well. We won well, beat Ross County first game of the season. Say we won well, we scored seven goals, you know. But so this season, I'm just saying it might not come. Michael Beale has brought in nine, ten players. He, he's the pressure is on him to deliver. We're in the Champions League. We look forward to that. But it, we might just have to scrap a little bit and dig in this season for our title. Are you going to have to scrap soon? A week on Sunday. Rangers at Ibrox. Yeah. It's not far away. And that's the thing, Laurie. You know, the Champions League is coming up fast as well. Craig, you're going to jump in there? No, I just, you're right, John, in terms of... I think that Celtic definitely need to, to find something else uh, this season. And that's not talking about the scrap and all that. Because they, yeah. they, they're clearly changed... Uh, team in terms of their, the way that they're playing under yes, Brendan that, than what they did under correct. under Ange. Mm-hmm. So what what really flourished in terms of the fullback areas were the inverted fullbacks with Taylor and um, Johnson. They played that role well. That looks as if it's slowly going to change. Uh, and and then again, so there's there's back to those kind of straight uh, roles for for Taylor in particular. Um, you know, I think uh, as a whole, def- defensively, uh, the, the injuries definitely play a part. In the middle of the park, I think the dynamic um, intensity, high level that they had has dropped off. I think Brendan likes to, he's a little bit more patient. Yeah. Um, so, again, they, they, they're going through a change. Maybe haven't had the, the, the personnel in yeah. terms of the, the amount of changes that Rangers have had. But they are also still going through change under a new manager. And that can take a little bit of time. Laurie? I agree with both yeah. uh, John and Craig what they had to say there. Uh, I do feel we, we do need uh, a ball winner in the middle of the park. We do need a bit of physicality, a bit of tenacity, uh, if you like. Uh, the midfield at the moment uh, strikes me as been a bit lightweight. What I feel, Paul, about David Turnbull, I know that uh, he scored twice against Ross County a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I think David Turnbull... Uh, given that he's had a couple of serious injuries in his career, what I've watched about him is that subconsciously in the back of his mind, he's reluctant to run at the defenders and take them on. He looks to part with the ball at the first opportunity. He reads the game well. Uh, he's got a lot of skill. But it reminds me of Ian Durant many, many years ago who suffered a career threat and injury, kept him at the game for three-plus years. And uh, Ian Durant's forte, like David Turnbull, was running uh, at defenders. Uh, and I always felt, that although he did manage to resurrect his career, he was never the same player. Uh, I do think that subconsciously, uh, coming up to date where David Turnbull's concerned, he's very reluctant to run at, uh, at defenders. Uh, I think it's in the back of his mind, uh, guys, that he could get injured again. He likes but, to play. So he likes yeah. to play in pockets. He does play slightly higher forward yeah. for Celtic. He's certainly, in my opinion... Uh, Laurie, not not somebody that has that that um, individual ability to to stand someone up, you know, to to go by them in a one v one situation. But unless but he, unless he's on the edge of the box, yeah. But then he's not necessarily going by somebody. He's taken up a mm. really good position. He, he shifts it. He, he and shifts hits it and yeah. hits it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think that's where he's very very good in terms of uh, what he does. And when when he when he strikes and he does strike often, he hits target. But you then know, he scores when, goals. But then when you're chasing the game and the opposition are playing on the counter and you need you need bodies to get back mm. behind the ball. It's not David Turnbull's no. game. You need ball winners in the middle of the park. David Turnbull to play slightly ahead of the, the, the front the sorry, the middle two and then to give him opportunities to play off the front. Only when you're on the top and you're on the front foot and you're winning games can then David Turnbull go and express himself and play the way that he likes to play and get shots off on target and score goals. That's what he is. He's a goal-scoring midfielder. I see that um, Chris Sutton was saying, I don't know if it's arrogance. He didn't say it was arrogance, he said in the mail. Um, I don't know if it's arrogance or whatever. Have they been sitting on their hands? But will they be ready for the Champions League? And he thought letting Jota go, yeah, 25 million. What yeah. could you do? Yeah. Aaron Moy, well, there's nothing they could do. No, He's injured. Tired, yeah. People don't seem to know that, Craig. And I know yeah, yeah. you mentioned that a while ago. Mm-hmm. And Starfelt, there is an yeah. argument. Why was he allowed to go? But 
I know what you're saying, John. Navarotsky, who could who could have known he would be injured? Uh, Carter Vickers came yeah, back, like but maybe too quickly. But, but yeah. Celtic, well, Celtic sure. are going to be fine. Like you're right for me, and again, uh, you know, sitting the other side, and uh, I've seen it also with, with Rangers, and, and and it gets emotional, and there's a big reaction. Celtic guaranteed will bring in two or three players before the window closes that will strengthen the squad. Um, they've had a really horrendous run uh, of injuries, which is sometimes just down to um, bad luck. And when they've got everybody available, they're a really strong squad. Um, I have no doubts about that. That will go the distance again and be in there swinging for trophies. The European side of things, I just think, like I said, the only one thing where I'd go, can you add, is a, is a top striker. And that, that would be a spend. And yeah. it's just what to, to, they would be to willing to spend. a different option to what Kyogo gives us. Yeah. And a holding midfielder to support but, but, Callum uh, McGregor. Okay, but yeah. what, Hatati, yeah. sure. Hatati for me, yeah. I, look, the combination of yeah. the, the three last year, right? Mm-hmm. Hatati, McGregor, and then it was either Aaron Moy or it was O'Reilly yeah. or... Uh, yeah. I, mean, I, was, I, think, I think Brendan was justified in terms of the pre-season and Turnbull coming in. Scored in in, yeah. in, in the first mm-hmm. game. Uh, Ross County, who's very, very sure. good. Could have got a hat-trick. But I think the, for the balance, I think Atati has to come back and play. The manager spoke after the game. He was asked about some of the new players home who came on for a bit and also Laga Bielka. Yeah, it's a good eye-opener for them at the level. I thought that he did well, Gustav. You know, he's strong, he's committed, he, he passes the ball well and he's, he's only in and, and uh, I thought he was, he was strong for us today. Oden's a boy that's got talent, he's a young player and this experience will be good for him. Laurie, thanks very much for calling. I think your message is, in Brendan, you trust. Absolutely, yep. Thanks, Laurie. Cheers, Laurie. Good All to hear best. you. Cheers. Thanks for calling the Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. It's coming from both sides of the city. And Craig Moore has just issued a... Stay calm, Celtic fans. It's all going to be okay. So I can imagine that uh, Kerrydale Street, Craig, they'll be writing it down and saying, <laughs> Craig Moore says it's going to be okay. Is he at the wind-up or is he being serious? No, you never know with Morrow. Nah. You never know with Morrow. You never know what he's up to. <laughs> and Aaron Moy, because some people are saying that, you know, why is he away? He's got an injury. So he had to go. 32 years old. He was brilliant last year. Only, what, six months, well, no, eight months ago he was playing the World Cup Finals. He done well, didn't he? I thought, you know, he did have a very good season. I think a lot of supporters, maybe at the beginning, were a little bit unsure. Uh, but but Aaron Moy uh, certainly done himself justice. Uh, I think he he won the Celtic supporters over. And it was a great find uh, from Ange. It was a great find to bring a player of Aaron Moy's experience in at the right time, and it worked to perfection for the club. This time around, he's gone. Jota's gone. People he, think we yeah. can can, can, we, can we replace him? <laughs> is can he coming we, back? Is Jota coming difficult, back? Difficult whether he comes back. I, I don't know. I, I can't see it happening yeah. because of the the wages. Um, I can't just see the the, the, the sure. Saudi team just sort of saying, "Off you go back to Celtic without any sort of finances involved." They just pay twenty five million pounds for him for sure. Although it looks as though he's going to be on his way out of Al Etihad. It's incredible though. on loan, isn't it? He's just and he's not fitting. And there are some. You know, there's uh, a few quotes from someone in an agency over there saying it looks as though he is going on loan. I think also a lot of uh, this, that particular quote, Paul, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's kind of like a quote that's come from the, not this, yeah. not the club, but the, F, the FA. Um, so again, gives you an idea mm-hmm. in terms of it's slightly different over there. Um, and the players are signed by the, the FA uh, to then go into the clubs. Um, so yeah, different setup, but Hopefully Jota, because look, he's a young boy. He's a young boy sure. who's he's in his prime and you want to see him enjoying his football. They're uh, missing him in the brazen head across the way, aren't they? Oh, well, yeah. Well, they'll Just definitely a few months ago. There, yeah. yeah, It's a Saudi journalist who's been on in the last couple of hours, Mohamed Al-Bakiri. He's confident that Jota is on his way out of the club. But what is, does it mean anything for Celtic fans? Probably not. He's probably not coming back. Or is he? Well, I, get, I, th- uh, I think if there's a way to make it work, they, they'd mm-hmm. love to have the boy back at the club. I think they... He did brilliant, by the way, when he was here. The goals, the assists, the way he played, the way he entertained the crowd, yeah. everything. So if there's an opportunity to bring him back, absolutely do it. But with the financial side of things, uh, I don't know if I can see it happening, but I'm, I might be way off the mark. To get Jota back on the wing. Yeah. John, are you singing that song? No, maybe not tonight. Will the Rangers fans be singing tonight? Let's hope with PSV in town. Michael Beale, after the win at the weekend, said, yeah, it was tough. 
but it sets Rangers up well for Europe. It's not going to be the same uh, players that play. It's not going to be the same type of game. It's going to be, the other team's going to obviously throw a lot more at us in terms of possession and, and chances. That will open up spaces. Uh, it'll be a completely different type of game. Again, though, today we've had over 20 shots, and, and at some stage these chances have got to become goals because otherwise you don't kill the game or you don't get the result where it needs to be and everything becomes a little bit more tense than what it needs to be. Today's game was a carbon copy of Party Fissel or Rafe Rovers at home last year. Those are tough games, aren't they? You know, they, yeah. When you're playing, quotes, lesser opposition, if you get through, that is the main thing, isn't it? Yeah, but that yeah, one hundred percent. The win is the most important thing. Yeah. You go through to the the next round. Um, but it, I think last week, Paul, I touched on in terms of your starting lineup. When you when you continually change yeah. your starting lineup, um, it, it kind of it's, it's it's very very difficult because as a player, you're in and out of yeah. rhythm. Um, whereas I'm a big advocate for just go and win the game of football put your strongest players out there go and get the job done and then you can make your changes you but did that, you cautioned against that last Tuesday but does he know his yeah. best team is he still Good sort question. of tinkering mm. with you know his back four mm. you know, Barisic didn't play at the yeah. weekend Jack Campwell Lundstrom yeah yeah you know yeah. you've mentioned Tom Lawrence quite mm. a few times I think he's yeah, looking he's, to bring Tom back take some in. time yeah. and yeah. Yeah. Probably. he's training you know he's back training well apparently mm. so does he know his best mm. team yet that's, that's why he's sort of that's, tinkering with it yeah, could yeah. Lundstrom be on his way out what do you think Craig uh, you know there's uh, yeah, been yeah, they, murmurings I mean, for a while yeah, yeah I don't look I don't think in terms of uh, Rangers uh, the midfield moving forward and what it's looking like uh, in terms of the energy and the legs um, I, I'll be honest with you I don't think there's room for Lundstrom and if again an opportunity may come along for him to, to move on I'm sure it'll be something that um, they they would all look at but back to the thing about combination partnerships mm-hmm. John and you know I'm looking and I'm remembering the time that, that you played obviously with, with Henrik Larsson and uh, and Chris Sutton and all that sort of stuff you know like when you when you when you have your combinations and you have your understanding of players and you you grow and that develops and it's really important on the field those mm. combinations those partnerships and early on in the season like I says there, there, there's, there's deep squads there's a lot of games of football that are going to be played I just don't like see seeing all the changes I like to see players get into good rhythm yeah yeah so and do I so do I. So many changes at the weekend. We'll find out if it's going to work out tonight. Rangers kick off at 8, but we'll have the team news pretty soon. As you know, we've teamed up with Aleo here in Glasgow to give you the chance to win up to £250 to spend in the brand new relaunch sports bar. And you can watch all your favourite sports action this season. To enter and to be on this Friday night, go to this is go.co.uk. Craig Moore is just jotting that down. Going to take a very quick break. Then we're looking at, uh, well, again, at what's coming up tonight. And also the Viaplay Cup coming up. And also this weekend, really important. Celtic want to get back into action against St. Johnson, who have had a dreadful start to the season. The Rangers not thinking about the weekend at the moment, only about PSV. And in the traffic and travel in a moment, you'll hear how uh, all roads are leading to Ibrox and how are the roads behaving. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Access to a wide range of renewable energy and energy efficient products. Let's go! So much European football this week and one of the biggest names in town, Aston Villa, will be at Easter Road on Thursday night, the John McGinn Derby. I knew you were going to say so, that. I know, I, I wish I hadn't said it. I need to come up with another line. Oh, sorry, John. No, yeah. no, it's all right. It is the John McGinn Derby because John McGinn left... <laughs> left Hibs to go to Villa what he was did. it for sorry if I've got yeah. this wrong four no, or five million was yep. it could have gone to your old club could have been at yeah, Celtic um, yeah. rumours were they wouldn't they yep. wouldn't put up with the money um, John ended up going down yep. to Aston Villa and he has been a revelation he captains Villa yep. I don't know if he captains a national team Andy Robertson I think is no, the captain right. but he's a big part but, of it oh yep. huge yep. and what a player he's become sure. he really has scored at the weekend yep. Craig it is, it's box office that isn't it yeah, no. Nah, look again. Look, it's great for um, great for Hibs, you know. Like to to get a a top opponent like yeah. that, uh, it'll it'll capture the imagination of supporters. Obviously, Scotland v England, uh, a little bit of that. Uh, but it'll be a top match. Aston Villa um, responded well mm-hmm. after a, a, a not a very nice first day of the season for them away to Newcastle. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, oh, your old team. Yeah. yeah. But but recovered well with a huge result against uh, Everton. So it should be a really really good game. John McGinn. Um, I'm always singing his praises, to be fair. I think, you know, with the national team, 
Uh, you see how important he is to the Scottish national team, his drive, his energy, his, his desire. Uh, and it's exactly the same uh, with his club, Aston Villa, and he, he's been a huge player for them as well. And later in the week, Hearts against Pauk of oh, Salonika. Tough match. Isn't it? Tough, yeah. tough match. I remember playing Pauk, um, John, back in the late 90s. Mm-hmm. And, and um, it was one of those ones where it's, it's a rectangular, like nice tight atmosphere and all that. And yeah. behind the goals, they sing, and it goes to the other end, and they sing, and it bounces. It bounces. Wow. And I remember before the game, Gordon Petric going out oh, yeah. in the middle of the pitch mm-hmm. and kind of giving it the shake in his hands as if to say, oh, yeah, come on, let me hear you. And I'm like, this is before the game. I'm like, big man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not a game of football. Worse. Worse. Yeah. We ended up drawing a nil-nil, but a very, very intimidating atmosphere. And Barry spoke about it as well. Oh. It's called stereo when you hear it from either side. Ah, it's stereo, isn't it? Yeah. deserve their place, yeah. you know, because Top. a great result against Rosenberg last week. It sure was. Yeah, yeah. Well, Rosenberg are not what they are, but no. still, you know, still they can cause problems and uh, great, great win for Hearts. And Aberdeen in action as well this week. They come in. They didn't have to qualify until now, Craig, and uh, they've got, Jamie McGrath could be joining them from Wigan. Yeah, and, and look, Jamie's obviously, um, we all know him well and what he's done here uh, before getting his, his move. Uh, you know, he was brilliant at St Mirren. He then, I think, moved to, to Dundee United uh, and then obviously went down to, to, to Wigan. But look, uh, a, a strong midfield player, um, lots of energy, um, would be a would be a good signing. Uh, he's certainly a very good player. The Dons will play Hacken this week in the first leg and that's in the Europa League, the playoff round. So yeah. Rangers tonight, so we'll get four. Teams in action this week. Celtic will come into it in the Champions League. Mm-hmm. The Champions League draw will be made next week, isn't yeah. it? It's the 31st of the month, right about the transfer window. Uh, the Dons, do you think they can go through? It's, it's going to be tough, Hacken, isn't it? I, I think Hacken yeah. had a yeah. huge win over the mm-hmm. two legs. I, I, I know that. I don't know the exact scoreline. So, look, it'll be a really, really good test. Um, I, think I think they've got a chance. Um, mm. You know, Barry Robson, I think, has done a really good job. Uh, I think that, that Aberdeen are a, are a strong enough team now that can compete. Um, so fingers crossed, and as we, we we keep saying all the time, for Scottish football, yeah. it's it's brilliant if we can, if we can see more clubs in and and in these competitions for longer than you know getting to Christmas. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, the coefficient. In fact, I see Stephen Naismith was saying that their opponents they're getting uh, some time off. They don't have to play a league game in pref- preparation for the game with Hearts. Do you think that we should be doing that? Well, I know it's, it's something that happened also, uh, maybe PSV last time for the they Champions did. League right. qualifier. They, they've got it next week as well. Yeah, have, yeah. They, have they? There yeah. you go. So, look, a lot of a lot of FAs in, in different mm. countries obviously do a lot more mm. for their for their clubs to to give them every chance to try and progress. Look, I, I couldn't tell you how hard scheduling is for for all the matches and and all the, all that sort of thing, Paul. But I think when we get deeper into the competition, maybe look at it then. Yeah, if yeah, the yeah, further yeah, they yeah. go, if they go through the group stages, sure. and and then they get deeper into it, and then obviously then give them the best opportunity mm-hmm. to go and get results. And who won last year? Rangers. Yeah. You know, PSV got time off. Yes. Yes. So it doesn't always work. No, no, Plus, it doesn't, no. doesn't always work. But yeah. again, I, I I think you know you see in other places that the, their willingness to support their clubs to yeah. try and. And give them the, the the best opportunity or a slight advantage, I guess. But then to other progress. clubs mm. then have to agree. Maybe yeah. you say, for instance, you play in another club, and then they say, "Well, you've had an extra day." You know, is that fair? But then other clubs have to support the teams that are doing well in Europe. And a lot of those clubs from a lot of those countries don't have what we have here in Scotland, and in particular, Glasgow. Indeed, what the so, weather, of course. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I wasn't going to go into that myself. No, indeed, no but John. you know what I mean? That's yeah. why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So European ties are plenty. Tonight, though, PSV against Rangers will have the team news shortly. 90 minutes to go. Um, Reagan is on the line. Good evening, Reagan. Oh, it's good to be on. Thank you for having me. Always good to hear you, Reagan. So, what are you thinking? Um, I'm a little bit worried about, about Celtic, Paul. Um, I just hope that uh, after Sunday, it's a big week I'm call um, for the board. I heard Mark talking last night, I thought he made a lot of good points. And I, I'm just hoping that, that the Celtic board will listen to the show because I think um, after watching the game on Sunday, I just thought they were, I thought they were lacking in ideas. And um, I think the squad needs a, 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 a really fresh... A, a, um, 
because I think sometimes we, we, we're the one in the, the trebles in Scotland that can mask what the real problems are. And I think sometimes on this show, maybe I've been too kind to the squad, but I think the, I think the bench on Sunday showed you, Paul, that it's a travesty for Celtic Football Club to bring Brendan Rodgers back up to Scotland and not back him. You know, it's OK um, me coming on the show and, get, and saying to the squad that it's... Um, a squad that's doing well, but Brendan Rodgers said himself, Paul, in the very first press conference on on the show that um, he wanted to do well in Europe. But if Celtic have struggled to beat Ross County at Celtic Park, they they, they played okay against Aberdeen, and then they I don't, I don't think they registered a shot on target in the full ninety minutes. But, um, and I think it's important to pay full respect to Derek and his. Squad because they did yeah. well, but I, I think it's a big, big worry for Celtic supporters because I, I know that Celtic supporters will pay their money for Champions League football, um, Paul, but they don't want to be going out to um, Barcelona and PSG. I, because Berendon was here before yeah. and he said he, need, he, need, he needed back, so I think it's important that Celtic do that. But some great points there, yeah. just to unpack some of them. For example, what about the battling qualities, John? For example, when Greg Taylor got whacked by Danny Armstrong, there was something there. Barry was saying last night, and Mark, he agreed. But they didn't really claim for it much, did they? No. Taylor goes off and then they lose a goal. That's not an excuse. Yeah, but no, but the what, battling. What, you're looking at it, Regan, right? We've brought in two centre backs. We've given Welsh yeah. a new contract. We've brought in Yang. We've brought in um, Holm. We brought in um, uh, an Australian centre forward, Tilio. Craig, Tilio. Tilio uh, that they reckon he's a wide player, but can play through the middle, can play either side. So yeah. we brought in players. Well, what are we saying then? The, the players are not ready, or what are we saying? We need better players, and we need players with more quality in, right. in what in what areas? You know, so. It's easy saying, like, I understand what you're saying and I totally agree with you. We need, I think we need quality. Yeah. We need another centre forward that can go and take some pressure off Kyogo. God, yeah, forbid, Kyogo yeah. God forbid he gets injured and he's out for several yeah. weeks. Is as, as O showed enough? He comes no, in, no. fits and starts. Um, the two centre backs, I think I'd reserve my judgment on because. Um, too early. The, in, uh, Lago Bialka was only three days in uh, at the club, and he's he's yep. then he, he has to make his debut. Navrovsky, I think, has looked has looked very good. He's looked decent. So what we're saying is, we we need quality players better than the ones that are actually already in the building, and the, yeah. these are not easy to find and cost a lot of money. Um, and but wait a minute, is that not why you've got recruitment departments that they're all hailing and going on about? I know, that's, but that's why you've got them. You know so what? we got it wrong with Yang oh, and oh. Holm and these it needs players. To be better. But these are work in progress. We need players now sure. to but hit what, the ground running. Brendan Rodgers, uh, I think Matt Ma made the point uh, on last day's show. He said that uh, Brendan Rodgers said on Friday that he's just there to coach the players. For me, that was a big, that was a, a sad point for me that said to me that Brendan's not going to full control because clearly a manager of Brendan Rodgers that does not say I'm just here to coach the players mm. Mm. I, I find that a little bit alarming um, because although the recruitment has been very good under Ange Ange decided to bring Kyogo he decided to bring Abada he made the final call on on um, Carter Vickers he makes a final call on Maeda um, to bring in a manager of Brendan Rodgers' ilk um, in, in the position that the club were in with plenty of money as well, the Champions League money, the sale of Jota. Um, I can't believe that, that's, I can't buy that, into that that's true. I think he might not have full say, but I think he, he will have some, some say. Absolutely. He's, a, he's able to say yes or no, uh, or no on players. Um, Listen, Reagan. I don't, look, I don't know what your opinion is, right? And, and Celtic could go out and spend a lot of money, which we know they're yeah. not. And I, and I think that um, that's actually quite smart because I, I, I still believe that the gap, certainly at that Champions League level for Rangers and Celtic, is not coming closer as in we're closing the gap. It's getting bigger, mate. This gap is getting bigger. 
in terms of the top Champions League teams. Let me ask the three of you. Jota was what around the six million? Would that be right? So that's that, yeah. that's a six big signing million, in yeah. Scotland, right? Yeah. Big signing. Yeah. Did it work? They got twenty five million back. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hatati's come in for what two, three, three million or something. Yeah. Great signing. Mm -hmm. Where are the Hatati type of signings? Where are the Furuhashi? So they spent good money on them, mm -hmm. not crazy money. Mm -hmm. Celtic do balance the book. They've got treasure trove in at the moment. Now I know it could go in one player mm -hmm. in England, right? We know that. But the signings, people like Reagan yeah. thought there would be better signings by this time. Well, we all did. Nine and days we to were go. all hoping yeah. that Yang would be a superstar. And, and he that, might be and, one day. And at home was yeah. a superstar. But we don't need them one day. <laughs> we need them no. now. Yeah. We're losing and, and, games. And by the way, we, we, you know, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. But and, uh, it, it's a difficult one because do you play them in, in, instead of a Hitati, instead of a Turnbull, instead of an O'Reilly? You still have to keep your, your proven ones in there. Mm -hmm. But you just need players to challenge them, other players, so they, yeah. they're on top of their game. They're not taking their eye off the ball. They're at it every single week. And they weren't at it's it changing. at the weekend. It's changing in terms of your recruitment. You brought recruitment up, yeah. Paul. Right? So when it comes to Asian recruitment, uh, in terms of the leagues and all that, Ange knew all about the leagues. Mm -hmm. He knew all about the players. This is not something new. Um, now, this, this may be uh, something now that when you have a manager that moves on, all of a sudden, Brendan is, is left with players left by the previous manager who might not be his type of player for, for what he's looking to play. Um, so there, there, there's a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of changing things that happen when a new manager comes in. But in regard to whatever recruitment Celtic are um, doing and, and, and how they go about their business, I absolutely believe that Brennan Rodgers is across it and he's making decisions, yes or no, whether players come to the football club. Yeah. Otherwise, why would he have come just two yeah. months ago? Why? Why? Yeah. why would he make the comment then that... Um, That's a great point, John. Yeah. You know that Regan is talking about, you know, I, I have the players, I, I, I'm dealing with what players I have and I have to coach the players that are available to me and, and, and make them better. Yes, he's very good at that, but mm -hmm. also I, I, I'm, I'm with you, Craig, it, for the life of me, I can't understand why Brendan Rodgers wouldn't have a say on what players come to the club. Regan, what would be your final point? What would you say? I'm just hoping that the board actually do something because I, I, I would be very disappointed to bring a calibre of manager like Brendan Rodgers in. And Paul, I, I, see me when I come on this phone and I always come on and I try to be positive, but watching this squad over the past two Two to three weeks. I'm seeing the squad needs help. Um, you, I mean, you just, you just need to look at Brendan Rodgers' first time. See on the bench for Celtic when they played. When Brendan was first here, they had Tom Rogic, they had Lee Griffiths, they had Dembele, they had pa, 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 uh, Patrick Roberts. Wow. I, 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 I mean, I to the bench on Sunday. You had Burnaby. You had. Um, you know, you not not great, not, not 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 great players on the bench, and I think that's part of the problem is that Brendan wants to do something in Europe, and if Celtic are struggling to beat what's in Scotland, then he's he's not going to be happy. And I think sometimes we have to face the reality that that is what that is why Brendan leaves from bigger waters because he wants to be back to the transfer market. I agree with everything you said there, but I I I wouldn't be going. Slamming, and you're not slamming, but you're, you know, you're saying that it, you know, it's, um, you know, the players are, are not quite good enough. That was the reaction that we all felt on the weekend. But we have to be realists as well and think, well, it's one game. It's one oh, game. Sure. We decimated yeah. with injuries. But John, listen to that yeah. bench his last time. Yeah. Right? Listen, let's see what Brendan Rodgers said just be ahead of the weekend. That's got everyone talking, especially on the back of the defeat on Sunday. I've said that before that you know the team, the team needs match winners. It needs. This is it coming now. It's pretty simple in terms of how it, how it works. Ultimately, I will develop and coach the players that the club provide me, and then the process of the club providing me the players is that we have a great. Uh, network here of scouts headed up by Mark who as I've said before and I repeat he, he's done a fantastic job working within the model of the club and bringing the players in that, that fit in with the club which allows the club to be sustainable and, and successful at the same time so they have a, a pipeline of, of players there that all will fit in and then it's sort of then really picking the profile that fits us best and of course I, I play a part in that so uh, but they do a lot of the great work 
watch players over numbers of months so that they have various players for each position. So whenever we do lose one, like you say, with Gustav, uh, there's a replacement to come in. But it's not always straightforward. It always takes time. But like I say, a lot of great work that goes on. And, and ultimately, as I said, I, I will coach and develop and work with the players that I'm provided. And of course, I have a, a part in that. But the clubs run very, very well. It's very sustainable. And that's what's given it that to stability and success over a number of years and uh, and I it's my responsibility to adhere to that wow when you when you play it back now yeah. that was just ahead of the weekend yeah but I still you know what I take out of that still yeah. not that he's not across it mm-hmm. that he still is in an influential position mm-hmm. the leg work the leg work he's not being involved in the leg work mm-hmm. he's coming with potentially um you know three four five pro- profiles that have been shown to him yeah that he knows that the club are working on behind the scenes okay. and then eventually, um, you know, a signing, uh, you know, happens. Yeah. And he um, did say a great yeah. network of scouts yeah. at and, the club. And yeah. he is a crosser. He does. Okay. And, it's, and it's worked exceptionally well under the previous manager. Um, yeah. and, and Craig is right. They will be sent, they will be sent videos. They'll be having phone yeah. calls. They'll be working with agents. A lot of players will be offered to them, but, like we've already mentioned, Celtic have to get it right. They have to get the right type of player to come and play for a club like Celtic where the responsibility is you have to win every game. Um, and I'm sure, as Brendan just yeah. nailed it there, he is a part of that process. Of course, as the manager. But, I mean, there are questions. Reagan, you're always positive. You always make a great contribution. And yeah. you certainly have done so again tonight. Cheers, uh, Paul. It's good to be on. Thanks very much, Reagan. Reagan. Cheers, Reagan. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Access to a wide range of renewable energy and energy efficient products. Let's go! Thanks, Chris. Have you ever been patient, guys, on the way to a game? Great update there on the traffic, but be patient. Yep, take it easy. Craig Moore is here giving advice to the Celtic fans, and he's also going to give us uh, his predictions for what's going to happen tonight. And John Hartson, and that was a good call with Reagan there. Um, it was. He cares about his football club. Oh, he I does. thought he was very he measured. Yeah. and yeah some good debate about what's going to happen the next nine well. days are going to be interesting aren't they yeah, so. they are they are and the next couple yeah. of games will be as well yeah. but there's big games happening all the time how Celtic respond now to St Johnson at the weekend how Rangers go about tonight's game yeah. they could do with a really positive result and then in a couple of weeks time then we have the first we have the first big one at Ibrox September the 3rd. Much interest in that one, do you think? It'll be... <laughs> Craig, you'll be there. Oof. You got your ticket. Yeah. Uh, no, I haven't. No, no. I, I haven't. Have got, got to buy uh, his ticket. Uh, <laughs> well, I bet they will. They do the leg- Is there a door for the legends? Oh, mate. Well, I've, yeah. I've not found it. Oh, uh, <laughs> not true. <laughs> nah, look, interesting times. Interesting yeah. times. You know one thing that we, we haven't touched on? Go on. Um... Now, obviously, perfect situation is the, the, the Celtic mm. situation where you don't have those qualifiers um, to get into the Champions League. That's a great situation to be in. Mm. But sometimes, I, I guess, in terms of the amount of games, so Rangers are obviously having to play more games and, 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 and therefore you're getting an opportunity to kind of gel more. Um, whereas, obviously, Celtic have played less games. It wasn't a great result, but you can kind of then understand a little bit more that they haven't played as many games. Mm. They're still working on new things as a, as a new manager has come in. It was just something I was thinking about there as we went off air. Yeah, I asked yeah. it the other day. Is there something about playing, you know, against um, Servette last week? Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. PSV this week. And Celtic are going from, you know, Kilmarnock or yeah. St. Johnson straight into, well, Rangers game and then Champions League. So that is the, you would want to be straight into it with the guarantee of the 30 million. But there's maybe, you know, Something kind of to that be preparation, said yeah, yeah, preparation yeah. matches games. Yeah, and, and, and an understanding already, mm. having played these games and got through big games. Where's the Rangers team, Craig? You've normally got it first. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. We can't give you, if you yeah, checked with haven't, them. Haven't come through. Michael's haven't, not been on to you just yet. yet. I no. see there's a new director on the board, as I pad, just yeah. waiting for the team to drop any second. The appointment of a new director, John Halstead, to the board of okay. directors. Right. Give him the history. I'm yeah. joking, I've just yeah, thrown the name yeah, Well, what we yeah. do know is that there's, yeah. there, there has been a, a, quite a number of changes over the last uh, six mm. months, Paul, hasn't there? Um, off the should have been. Uh, yeah. yeah, that yeah. is. So um, they seem to be set for, for a new direction. Mm-hmm. Um, and now it's, it's, like it says, up to the players to hopefully 
uh, provide a, another wonderful moment in, in European football against PSV in, in a two-legged affair. But th- this is going to be a massive, massive game tonight as we're waiting for the, the starting yeah. lineup coming through. I'm sure everybody's got their own view or um, their, yeah. their own starting 11s. Yep. How close How close can you get to the starting 11 that Michael will come up to? John, who's going to come out on top between me and you with our starting 11s? It should be you, shouldn't it? Because <laughs> exactly. I'm, not, I'm not speaking yeah. to anybody. You've got more of uh, an influence than oh, you know, me. <laughs> I'm just like you. I'm just, just guessing. Here's Michael Beale speaking about Champions League football and what it means to Rangers. Well, it's hugely important to the players because I know it's their dream and their ambition. It would be important because it'll be more finances than obviously going into the Europa League. We know we're guaranteed that, so these two games we can play over clear mind and go right for them. We don't need to worry about whether we're in or out. I've sat beside Steven Gerrard in our time here where they were real do-or-die moments against Galatasaray, Leisure Warsaw, Ufa, for example, to get into Europe or not be. So this one, we know we're in European football up to Christmas. It's what competition and in our way is an excellent team. But it's a fantastic opportunity for everybody. It certainly is. Craig, great European moments that you've experienced over the years. Mm-hmm. But it's over two legs. It isn't going to be one or lost tonight unless there was a well, an amazing performance yeah. or a disaster. Well, the game, in terms of those two-legged affairs... Um, Paul, it's changed from from when I was playing. You know that that away goal kind of thing, um, which which definitely threw up some curveballs. Uh, you know, I remember the the, the two nil Palmer game uh, and going away yeah. and conceding quite late. Um, eventually losing that game one nil, but doing enough over the two legs. But look, the the most important thing is, you know, the games that are played in Glasgow, whether it be uh, at Ibrox or whether it be at Celtic Park, we have a huge advantage no matter who we play against with the the atmosphere that both clubs create. And if you can take those early opportunities in games, you can really put a team on the back foot. Um, But you need to be at your very, very best. Uh, And and given you do that, then you put yourself in a wonderful position for for away ties, no doubt about that. Yeah, I I don't know what it is about that um, 12th man, if you like, over the years... uh, some of the results that Rangers have had and Celtic have had, of course, and I've been part of it. You know, you, it's almost like bring bring them on. You know, back in the day, it's like some of the teams we we beaten at that particular time was remarkable. But you know, it's it's not it's it's not one of these. Um, it's not a theory. It's it, it actually happens when the crowd get behind you. Opposition teams don't fancy it at all. John, here's the Rangers team. So Butland is expected. Tavernier, Suter, Goldson, Jack, Desers. This is the way it's coming out just now. Cantwell, Sifuentes, Sima is in. Okay. Barisic and Raskin. So that's close to yours, isn't it? It was one off. I, 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 I yeah. had Desers and Danilo. Uh, yes. Sima instead of Danilo. Mm. The rest is kind of what I'd uh, went well, I, to. I, I, I yeah. was five sure. off. No, you, no, you're only two. <laughs> so it's the back four then, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, Tavernier, Suter, Goldson and yeah. Barisic. Midfield three. Yeah, yeah Jack there with Jack Central, Sifuentes, Sifuentes and Raskin. Raskin. Yep. And I think um, I think Cam will be play, he plays behind Seema and Dessas. So, he, so, so Cam will plays in that 10 position, but in a central area, which I think is really, really important because I think that's when you see the bot, the best from Todd Cant- Cantwell in terms of the attack and threat that he offers, higher areas, central positions. And PSV under Peter Bowes has Benitez and goals, Tezzi, Romalo, Sangari, Lang, Dest, the captain, of course, Luke de Jong, yep. Bakayoko, whom Barry wanders about, Boscalier, Veerman, of course, who was yes, wanted Joey by Veerman, Rangers. Yeah. yeah, Joey Veerman and Saibari. Strong side. 11. Yeah. Strong mm. side. Um, strong side. Yeah, and again, like, like strong through the spine there. Do you like Rangers' setup, Craig, yes. tonight? Yeah, yes. positive. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I do, I do like that. I just think because the midfield three, I, I think with Sifuentes and Raskin mm. either side of, of, of Ryan Jack, who will play the central one, I think it, I think it's a really solid three, mm-hmm. um, and, and Jack has got like I said those two that, that have just got so much energy and can cover so much ground, and more importantly have got that drive and and if they can show that early tonight, then the Rangers supporters will get right behind that and will give them a really good opportunity to go and get the right result on the bench and a huge number of courses there are these days. So Robbie McCrory, of course, Lindstrom, mm-hmm. Lammers, Matondo, yep. Dowell, Sterling, Wright. Davies, Balogun, King, Devine and Danilo, or Danilo Pereira, to give him his full name. Okay. So you nice. thought Danilo... So what about Seema then? 
What's the what's the Alex Seema? Seema's yeah. come in. He's been honest enough. Um, he's a big, big lad. Um, kind of stays quite central. Um, he, he, he's done okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, that was probably the only different one than than obviously the 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 one that I'd kind of went to. But you look at the bench. You look at the bench. So look, Lammers will get some game time tonight. Matondo definitely will will come at some some stage and and hopefully makes a positive impact. Uh, Dow. And potentially Danilo, they're they're definitely the players that you're going to see come on um, at some stage of this match, Paul. A lot of fans have been coming on, sending uh, from the cars, from the buses, and they're asking for your prediction. And also they hear you, just have a bit of patience tonight. Because often the fans, they want it and they want it quickly. But this is different in Europe, isn't it? Yeah, look, or is it? But, but but you still need to start games well um, because, again, if there's a slack pass or there's a tackle that's not made or, you know, you, you can't afford um, to not utilise the support that you have. And, and if you start positive, you want to get the ball forward nice and early, you're really competing well, then the crowd, the crowd will thrive off of that. They'll give you a huge lift. Um, Rangers need to be at their best. You can't. You can't be carrying in Europe, uh, John. You can't be carrying three or four players that are that are not at the level. Things no. need to be absolutely at their premium across the board. And if they are, you can go and achieve quite special things here in Glasgow. Yeah. Well, I think early on in the game, played into Seema, get the likes of Cantwell on the half turn, play in, you know, the opposition half, and look to get balls in the box because it's not what play, play in Seema. If you're not going to give him service, if you're not going to provide him with opportunities, you've got to get the ball in the box from wide areas. We know Tavernier does it down the right yeah. uh, as good as anybody. And Barisic down the left. Down the left yeah. Right, Craig Moore, you played in so many European nights with Rangers. What is going to happen tonight? There's going to be fireworks. There's going to be an electric start. I'm going to go for an early goal for Rangers. An early goal. Um, and I think Cantwell will be involved in it. Um I can see Rangers getting a result, but it's either going to... I'm going to go 2-1. 2-1 Rangers uh, tonight in the match, but I think it's going to be an early goal that's going to give them the best opportunity to go on. I think Rangers will get beat tonight. I think PSV are a fantastic team. Yeah. Rangers have to be very, very good. We know what the atmosphere will bring, but I think PSV will nick it 1-0. And, um, you know, as I said, I just think that that's... Uh, that's the level of opponent. Uh, I really respect them. I've gone Rangers many times yeah. in Europe at home, but tonight I just think this PSV team, and as you said, Craig, Rangers will have to be perfect to get a result, but uh, I just think that um, PSV will nick it tonight. And they have scored variety. goals. So when you're looking at maybe playing against us, you're unsure of who we're going to pick and, and how the, the front line is going to look out. I think that's a bonus to have as, as, as a manager of a team when another side is looking at seeing how you might set up. And certainly, if you're not playing, there's a way that we can change the game with the guys off the side. And I think the front players, it's a, it's a big moment, these two games, and it's a moment where big players will hopefully step up and show their worth. Well, we know the team now. We gave you it. Final word to you, Craig Moore. Final word, hopefully uh, Rangers can go and get a great result, but they need to be at their absolute best. John, you're spot on PSV, very good side who have shown already this season, whether it be the qualifier or domestic games, they've scored quite freely. This time tomorrow night, Barry Ferguson will be here along with Peter Grant. John, have a great night. Your charity Thanks, Paul. on Saturday night in Glasgow. Cheers, Doing mate. Great Thank work. you very much. Thanks so much, John. Cheers. And to you, Craig. And we're back tomorrow at five. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Personal face-to-face advice on renewable energy products. Let's go! Global Eco Energy sell and install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial and public sector customers. With access to a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, air source heat pumps, and eco garden makeovers, we offer a bespoke service tailored to your exact needs. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global-eco.co.uk.